Hello guys, morning, afternoon, evening, depends where you are in the world right now. This is the Rug Detective Show coming to you again, 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 again. So just please make sure you like, subscribe, you follow, you do all the good stuff. Um, it's Sunday here, <clears throat> so we're going to actually give you another recap of, of our show. Give you an update what's happening in terms of the BTC, Ethereum, crazy market, crazy moves that's happening right now in the space. And also we're going to look from a technical aspect, we're going to look from a fundamental aspect to, to ensure that you're aware of what's happening from a, from a macro view. And then also we're going to take a look at the rug checklist, we're going to go through a project, uh, another rug unfortunately in the market um, place and giving some education of what you can do to prevent yourself from getting involved in these type of positions. So let's go guys. Um, so where we are today is this is the BTC chart. Um, yesterday we were literally trading around the 30,000 level when we did the last show. We've now spiked up to 34,800 level. We're just around 34,200 at the moment, 6% up today. It's been an absolute phenomenal move to the upside. I did say that the price um, would be looking at ranging between a 30 to 35,000 level. So if we take a We take a horizontal line and put this to 35 level. I just feel that psychologically this is a potential level. Obviously there is no clear upside targets because this is an all time high, but I feel that this 35 level, we'll see if it can be able to break that or not. Um, if it fails to, you have to remember that it's been a huge move to the upside. So sooner or later, there's gonna have to be a pullback and when it coincides with the RSI that's now literally above like 90 level so it's extremely high overbought at the moment stochastics is around 99 again overbought this is not a place where I would recommend you getting into the trade this is a place where I recommend you if you're in the, involved start selling out some of your positions I'm not necessarily saying everything but to start, if you are a day trader, start sending out some of your positions and looking for better entries when the price moves back. If you're more of a long-term hold, you don't need to do anything. Just hold your um, hold your BTC in cold in a cold wallet and custody where it may be, um, or you know, just in a safe safe place, and, and basically just hold long-term. This is a long-term play, guys. So this is where we are in the space. I do foresee that this 35 level will be very difficult to break unless we get some more news from the institutional side, from the governmental side, and that will just take it to another level. But there has to be some form of exhaustion in the price and, and, and a pullback or a tracement. I still have the trend lines up to the area of, as it's going up the trend line, we have levels currently around the 21,000, 22,000, going all the way up as the price goes to February of about 26, 27. I do see that you know there will be some form of a pause and maybe a range bound trading between the, you know, basically between maybe the 24,000, if it fails to get back to the previous um, high, which was a 20,000 level, then it can potentially test a 22, 23,000 and there'll be range bound trading for a few months. But so far, um, it's phenomenal move to the upside. And the reason why I also say this is because when I take a look at, so right now, if I take a look at what's actually trending in, if I take a look at what's trending in Austria right now where, where I'm based, you can clearly see that BTC is trending, it's huge. You know, you've got this guy, Peter, some about obviously about the pandemic, um, but, but you can presume that in most countries, BTC is trending at the moment and I just feel sometimes that when it was funny someone called me um, two days ago out of the blue and I hadn't spoke to that person for like more than a year and the first thing they said is oh what are your views about Bitcoin so when you start to hear people have no idea no experience about the space that are jumping in I always believe I don't believe it's late I just believe for this movement to the upside uh, one has to be very cautious because smart money are not really entering at this price. Smart money entered at lower prices, lower levels. So one has to be very cautious and take their time. So that's where we are with that. Now let's move on to ETH. So 
So ETH, we've basically seen that uh, from the move that I mentioned is around 750 levels. We're now around 800. It's just below the high of May 2018, which is 830. I did say that this is going to be an extremely important um, target for price. If it can break through that, then we really have the next level, which will be about 988. So this will be a psychological 1000 level in price. So if I just put this here, if it can get through that, then we'll probably have this 1200. So it's really making a, a staggered move higher. It's not accelerating to the level of BTC in terms of the steepness, but it's gradually moving. But I do see that this is gonna be level of resistance around 800 and was it 835 840 level could be a pullback upward trend line is slightly cleaner it's not as steep so you could be looking at around maybe the 650 level as a pullback in the price for an oscillation before continued move higher for the rest of the year so that's where we are um, as i noted and obviously a lot of people in the space that um, ETH is still undervalued in comparison to BTC. BTC is more than 50% above its highs. Um, but if you take a look at ETH, ETH is 50%, well, just over um, half um, off its highs. So they still undervalued the price point here in, in the market. Um, and then if you take a look at the RSI, it's not as high as around the 73 level. So you know there's still momentum higher and then the stochastics is around the 80 something level there was a bit of a pullback but it seems to be trying to trend slightly higher so that's where we are in terms of the price today uh, let's take a look at some news it's showing here that data shows 78 percent of the circulating btc supply is illiquid so only 4.2 btc in constant circulation and what tends to happen is when the btc is in constant circulation it essentially means that people will be looking at um, buying selling having opportunity that they can be able to move these between wallets and you know close their positions so these are more of a shorter term horizon in terms of a trader those that are um, in the former in the 78 percent um, region they um, literally are illiquid which basically means that they're holding positions in cold in a cold wallet in storage they're not looking at you know getting in getting out of positions they're looking at yearly you know you know two three four five you know we're talking about decade horizon in terms of the price point where you see this um, and obviously it shows you here one of the most treasured parts of BTC protocol is the fact that a system of mathematically provable and BTC are scarce so it just goes down the whole breakdown of the research from the on-chain analysis from Glassnode reported on the number of liquid and liquid coins in existence these days. So it's a good track to see here from this chart, the liquid and liquid supply uh, and where we are today. And on Twitter, Glassnode alluded to the fact that 78% of the circulating BTC supplies are liquid and therefore hardly accessible for buying. Uh, these points to a bullish um, investor sentiment as large parts have been hoarded so essentially they're hoarding up the BTC and they're not looking to let this go um, in the short term in the short term market or short term horizon of where we are today so this is something to be aware of and to look at so that's that uh, price points you know we're, we're starting to see that you know the CNBC is the main media that are now starting to comment on what's happening in the space and this was obviously data that came out yesterday when it broke through the 30,000 level all-time high 33. Now it's obviously got through that, tested just below 35 at the moment. And then now they're just saying that there's a steady climb uh, even as the stock market plunged in the early days of the pandemic. So this was in March 2020 when the pandemic, there was a huge drop um, in the price and it tested those lows uh, in BTC and, and Ethereum obviously. Uh, but now obviously it's really it's gone 10x from there and what they're obviously saying is slightly different from the first spike that that occurred in 2017 um, this situation in 2017 there was a lack of um, you know it, there was there was a connection between a crackdown due to it being seen as a scam 
seen as um, hackers are using this, seen as the, let's say, the, the underbelly, the underworld that involved, fraudsters are involved in this, but now it's slightly been cleaned up. You're now getting, let's say, the, the mainstream, the main market really being involved. In, and this is due to the devaluation of the dollar. This is due to what's happened with the pandemic. This is due to the accumulation of the printing of money. Um, so, uh, and people are looking for an alternative um, and this is where it comes into the space. So this is just a report there. And then if let's take a look at ETH very quickly. They mentioned in this chat, uh, Paul Lansky mentioned that we need to bring community and sustainability back to the heart of the theorem, basically stating that we must leave cash grab behaviors associated with DeFi in 2020 and work towards creating long-term sustainable projects. Totally agree with that. Um, what you've basically seen is that there has been a situation whereby there's been this, the mentality has, uh, in terms of the cash grab has been totally wrong, where the focus or to, um, essentially has been is just short term mindset. And I think there needs to be a transition between the focus in the DeFi space regarding uh, people's long term aims and opportunity. Even if you take a look back in 2017 with the whole ICO space, um, a lot of the team, the members of these projects were actually non, um, they were actually readily available. So they were non-anon, which basically means that people can actually know who the CTO of the company, who the CEO of the company um, is. Now fast forward where we are today, we're clearly seeing a situation whereby, you know, a lot of the projects are, there's anonymous, anonymity behind the space. Um, and obviously a lot of the code essentially um, could be hacked so there's opportunities whereby a lot of people have taken advantage of the space and this is something really to take a look at and where we are today um, so fast forward as I mentioned here the rise of DeFi is welcome um, but brings in its complications and as it stated the meteoric rise of DeFi in 2020 has brought great promise and even greater uh, investment in the industry however the booming the boom in the industry, the, the booming uh, interest in making a quick um, but thorough new techniques like yield farming um, and there's so many different opportunities from the yield farming areas um, from these type of projects that's really been involved in the space. So this is really something to be aware of and, and to, to essentially take a look at. And um, the solution from the ETH, ETH 2.0, the two, the layer two solutions, and this is something to be aware of. So, so moving forward, here is um, we can see um, talking about that subject is. Uh, just give me a second. My um, my lovely um, Australian Shepherd dog Bella here. Just give me uh, one second. Sorry, it seems like my Australian Shepherd Bella was a bit a bit hungry. So, um, okay, so just moving forward, now I wanted to touch on another um, about an unfortunate rug pull that took place uh, yesterday, and this was concerning this project called Cubic Finance. Cubic Finance is was a multi-layer deflationary DeFi platform. They came out with a pretty clean website. Um, they stated that they had audits done um, by Certix Solidity and Solidity Finance, which broke down information about, you know, its code, the tokenomics, um, the roadmap, and so on and so forth. But we're getting to a point where these bog standard audit reports are not really doing anything in the space. So if you take a look and go on to, to Twitter, they were doing a pre-sell raise and when you go through the information their main selling proposition was certic.io 
um, and also um, Solidity that they did the auditing and, and that was the aim is to attract investors, to attract people to actually get involved in the space. Um, but if you take a look at multi-layer deflationary platform, we've heard this before, 2% of the amount sent burn on each transaction. You know, what impact is that really going to have? We've seen hundreds of these type of projects. But anyway, so they managed to raise funds and ultimately the pre-sale, they said they were going to do the listing. So if we actually go to here, it shows that they were saying this is their, their Telegram account, which basically they're more or less paused. Uh, they've muted the chat essentially but if we dig deeper and take a look at the funds that they raised during the pre-sell so okay so if we dig deeper here so this is just based on investigation so they managed to raise about thirty nine thousand um, dollars which they had an e from the pre-sell and um, Following that pre-sale, uh, this is the 5,000 um, tokens. And what I basically did is did an investigation and tracked to see the connection of this pre-sale wallet um, to, um, to the creator, okay? So obviously what happens, they didn't actually list from my understanding, and basically they just, you know, literally a rug pull. Dev has gone dead. Uh, there's no communication people are asking in the chat what is happening um, what's going on with the fourth pool the third pool and so and so forth and you know realizing um, fake please don't scare me they said selling the, it worth on cubic for let's just scroll down to take a look at more information here I'm going to buy this 50% cheaper than pre-sale after launch. So they, people are also thinking that the launch is going to happen. But if you take a look at the code and you track the information, the movement of the wallets, you can see that this was the pre-sale wallet. This is the amount of uh, funds that they raised. Then if you look at the creator contract, as I opened up here, the creator contract, let's just click on this here. So the creator contract just shows you the flow um, between the wallets, but also interesting enough, you can see there's a deployment of the N3RD. So that's, this was a previous scam. Um, and then if you scroll down to based finance deployment, I think this was also a scam drip of finance. So from this same one creators has essentially created this scam syndicate that's going through. And unfortunately, a lot of people are losing money. So moving forward, um, what you're having also, is you're, you're having well-known influencers in the space like this individual who's essentially backing, receiving, you know, um, let's say incentives and forms of tokens or ETH to be able to shield these projects. Uh, this was back on the 31st, shield this project saying another interesting one I'm looking at I just saw they got their positive audit results and um, and released their pre-sale and blah 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 this information and these are type of individuals that have like 19,000 followers and if you then go back and if you take a look at this specific individual if I can even find I think he also commented and noted about various other projects related to this contact, contract creator, which, oh, where is it? Yeah, so Nerd 3RD Finance here. So if I go to here, here it is. So if you can see here, it says be aware MCP Nerd 3. So then it says here MCP. So Nerd Finance Incubate just had its first project launched. So this is the same influencer who's basically shilling this project. This project's connected to MCP, all scams. This project's connected to Cubic, which just scammed. So you can see there's a connection between what's happening in the space now. So moving forward for investors, it's extremely important to be able to do your due diligence, yes? And this is where the Rug Detectives DeFi checklist comes into it. Um, if you're looking to get into pre-sales, 
you really need to do your research to understand who's behind um, this project um, understand about you know the website go through the audits is there a longevity with this project um, find the pre-sale contract if you can get the pre-sale contract send it over to us we can do the research and connect the dots for you uh, we'll also take a look at who's actually shilling these projects and what are, what's their history and their reputation in the space because if you do the dots you can see what's happening and even once the pre-sale occurred people are even ask about whether the liquidity is locked liquidity is not locked because the funds have gone <laughs> so as you can be able to see from here uh, where is it yes yeah, as you can be able to see from here so you basically just need to connect the dots so all i'm just trying to say to everyone is be aware do your research um this is what we do with this whole process we do the whole smart smart contract auditing nothing is ever 100 percent, but we want to ensure that we minimize the risk as much as possible and give you every opportunity to succeed in the space so anyway there we are i'm going to be doing a, a report about this as well on twitter and do not be afraid to let um to send me a comment to like and also subscribe extremely important guys and even just very quickly if you wanted to even do some more research we can actually then start going into doing a bit of an seo dissect of this website if i could so i can actually find out more information about this website in terms of the meta keywords um the general attributes I can also find out I can also do a who's lookup so what I want to find out is when this website was actually registered so it shows it was registered on on the 4th of December 2020 I want to then see it fits you know clearly shows that it's protected here so it's not getting information so these are hackers it's concocted scheme that's happening so anyway be aware guys we'll be doing we'll start doing more um, let's say reviews of projects and we'll start accumulating if you're interested in this DeFi checklist let me know i'll be sending this out and um, i will speak to you soon do not forget to like subscribe to our channel guys and also uh, donate to the cause we're trying to do a lot in this space so anyway speak to you soon bye bye